She's so hot. I have, I have, a, I have a little bit of a crush on her. Hello, and welcome to another review and recap of RuPaul's Drag Race. Today we're going over episode 13 of season 13, which I'm super excited to go over. We're at the top five. This was a really good episode. Um, and yeah, so thank you for joining me today. If, you, if you're returning, I thank you for coming back. If this is your first time, definitely let me know how you feel about the video in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And yeah, let's hop right into it. Okay, so the girls come in from the stage um, where Simone just sent Utica home in a lip sync. In the previous week, the girls had the roast challenge and Candy Muse won. She did a really good job. She was super funny. And now we're stuck with our top five. You know, it's whittling on down. The girls, the pressure is here. This is Candy Muse's first win. And then all the other girls in her house, Aja and Dahlia, they didn't win any... Um, challenges when they were on Drag Race. So Candy Muse is feeling really, really good about that. Okay, so the maxi challenge this week is a acting challenge. It's an acting challenge where the girls are gonna be acting in Hanny, I Shrunk the Queens. Um, it's a sci-fi drama moment, but yeah, you know, it sounds really good. It sounds like, I really like the acting challenges. They're a good time. I do think that of the girls we have left, we have some of the best actors and performers. So yeah, I'm really excited to see how it turns out. So the girls sit down and they start going through the script and there's like, it's a chunky script and they're also like, okay, now that we're at this point, who's gonna be who? So the girls start rattling off who they want to be. Olivia Lux says she wants to be Ginger Ale. And Ginger Ale is kind of a ditzy like girl and everybody else is like, okay girl, why do you want to be her? You know what I mean? You're ju the judges have been telling you this is the, the same kind of like archetype that we're seeing you portray. So they're saying like she should do something else, but I don't know. Chardonnay, uh, Got Mick takes Chardonnay, Rose takes Brandy, Candy Muse and Simone, they both want Dominique. And Dominique is kind of like the, like the villain of this all, you know, the central character, the reason why everything happens, the center of attention. And that's kind of like Simone's reasoning for winning that character. Simone really wants to stand out, which is why she wants Dominique. Candy Muse, on the other hand, her reasoning is like, the other character left is like Margarita, who's a natural born leader, sexy and smart and like candy Muse is like great that sounds like simone and then dominique is kind of like crazy delusional out there wild crazy it sounds like candy Muse. now i don't know if that's a reason to do it again like if we're at the end i'd be trying to like push myself and stretch myself to do something that's out of my comfort zone but yeah that's just not i guess that's not where candy muse's mind is at but anyway after like a little bit of tuffling and like people kind of side that like simone should be margarita Simone takes Margarita and Candy Muse takes Dominique. Okay, so the girls, they get to rehearsing and then like they run through it a couple of times. And then once they're done um, running through it a couple of times, they go look for like their looks because they have to create their looks out of their own drag. And they can also use like fabric from fabric.com. But anyway, so some of the girls are stressing out because you know, we're at the end of the competition and like they're at the end of the competition and you know, they can't come out there with a ball gown trying to serve butch queen. So yeah, some of the girls are stressing out, specifically Simone, and also like they can't be wearing green, they can't be wearing like rhinestones and whatnot because like it'll reflect in the green screen, it'll mess up with the, with whatever is going on. But yeah, so Simone is stressing out a little bit. I feel like she's still in her head about not getting the role she wants. She doesn't want to let the house of Avalon down and she's just like, she's just in this loop of like stressing about not wanting to let anybody down and not getting it right near the end of the competition. Girl, you gotta let that shit go. Cause like thinking about everything else and like what other people are doing or like the role that you didn't get, that will just get in your way. You really just need to dial in on what you do have on your role and making that like a really fine reduction. They get a visit from Scarlett Johansson in the workroom and she gives some advice about, you know, just being committed about whatever the fuck is going on. Even if, you know, like the big fat Kate, cat even if the big fat cat like scratching at you isn't really there, loving the villain, and also just like giving it all you got no matter how much screen time you have. But yeah, but then after that, the girls get ready and I'm like, girl, are they doing this in a singular day? I do think that like memorizing scripts can be fairly easy, but I don't know. I just feel like having it all happen in one day is a quick turnaround. I don't know if that's what happened, but that's definitely what it's looking like. Okay, so the girls go out into the studio where um, Carson Cressley and Michelle Visage helping them. They're directing as the scene is going on. Yeah, so like looking at, just looking at like the 
So just looking at the bit of footage that we're able to see, as far as like Simone is going, I do feel like Simone is having a hard time creating the world and this atmosphere in her head of what this reality is. Cause it's kind of crazy cause they're being shrunk. There's a giant cat, you know what I mean? They got to find things that aren't really there and act as if they are. It's that whole commitment thing Scarlett Johansson was talking about. I do feel like um, Simone is struggling with that a little bit. Um, Candy Muse, Candy Muse just looks like to be having fun. You know, I don't think Candy Muse is doing a bad job, but you know, Candy Muse, you know, she's like, Candy Muse is an excitable, like personality, you know what I mean? She's a big personality, so she's bringing life into the studio on the stage. But I can't, I can't really tell if she's servicing the character that well. But it does look like she's having fun, and everybody's having fun. Olivia Lux, she's, she's girl, she's 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 acting, I guess. But she's she's giving, she's very much giving like the needy actor that needs approval because she has like a question every couple minutes, like question question um may i ask a question question where she's like turning around and asking stuff about what camera she's supposed to be looking at and the girls say she already knows there's no reason to be asking the questions but yeah um that's what she's doing in the rehearsal room i mean in the studio rose is performing like a technically trained actress the judges are eating up everything she does they said that she's doing good she doesn't need much help um and she's just you know she's performing well and then last but not least is Gottmik. Gottmik, um, Gottmik started off okay. Like, Gottmik wasn't doing bad by any means, um, but it left a little to be desired, but Gottmik takes direction very well from the judges. And once, like, the judges gets her a couple of pointers, she knocks it out of the park, and it becomes, like, exciting to watch her take the notes and then perform whatever's going on. It's time for the runway. RuPaul looks cute. I really like this dress. It's, like, chain sequenced moment. The guest judge is Cynthia Erivo. She's so hot. I have, I, have a, I have a little bit of a crush on her. So the runway this week is Oat Pockets. And first up, we have Simone. And she's giving this this like, what is this? It's giving like red hair Haley Williams moment. It's an actual like pocket. <laughs> Simone in a pocket. And she said lead singer of Paramore. She looks good. Olivia Lux, it's it's a very Olivia Lux moment where it just looks luxurious, like crystalline, diamonds and all. She has really big pockets. It's cute. It looks flawless, stunning, pristine. Okay, so I really love this look that Rosé has on. It's black and mod. It's black and white mod. I don't know what mod is, but it looks good. It's really fun. I don't know what this is. I don't know what Candy Muse is wearing. She said Japanese fire colorful and 40 pockets. What is it, origami? I don't know what this is. Okay, got Meg. She's this big coat. I love this. <laughs> so she's like, she has a flasher full of pockets and she's selling watches. Maybe pocket watches. She said it's inspired by Hercules. She's crazy, but I love this. This is like, it's funny. It's really funny. It's funny, but it's also fashion. I like this. It's very creative. I like how creative this look is. Nice. Good work. Ugh. There's only five looks, so I'm like done. Okay, so now it's time to watch Henny, I Shrunk the Drag Queens. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy this. I thought it was very funny. Um, I think it's very like interesting way, you know, cause like they couldn't really bring any other actors or actresses in because of COVID in him. And so it was nice. So it was like RuPaul, the only cameos were RuPaul and Michelle Visage, but Michelle Visage had a really fun cameo where she came in and was like stealing the girl's stuff. But anyway, the script is basically like Dominique, um, she shrinks the girls because they all voted her off. She, they said that she should be going home. And the girls have to make it across the room to the trade room so that they can like get big again. But they never make it to the shade button. Um, but Ginger Ale ends up reading Dominique, which shrinks Dominique and helps them grow up. Um, but yeah, I thought it was very fun. It was very funny. Uh, I thought that Rosé had like great like physical comedy. Her physical comedy was like a star. Um, Simone, I don't think Simone did that bad. I think like Simone, like her comedic timing was well, you know? I do think that Rosé was definitely bigger than Simone, but Simone, like, she hit her jokes. She was funny. Gottmik was funny. She hit her jokes. <laughs> Olivia Lux, her character did not have range. Although I felt like she did an okay job. 
I do again like what everybody has been saying it was very much one note through the entire thing which is like okay if you're just gonna give us one note but yeah so the fact it was like there just wasn't much range and like even when she was like climbing the the like cord to get to the sewing machine or when she was reading Dominique it was all very much like giggles and smiles happy to be here which like I don't know I just don't think that serves the character that well and even at this point in the stage if you know that like you've been giving like silly ditzy the whole time she still put on the baby voice I feel like there's like you can like be stupid oh my gosh like what you know like give us a different vocal affectation you know than what you've been giving us but that's not what she did she just gave us the same thing we have seen Olivia and Lux need to switch it up switch it up girl um but yeah uh Dominique, I think Candy Muse was good as Dominique, but I do feel like part of me wishes she was like a little bit larger, a little bit commanding. I think it was entertaining to watch again because it was Candy Muse, but as far as like character development, I don't think there was a whole lot of character development there. Um, and yeah, and Gottmik performed well. Again, like I'm not sure if there was that much character development for Gottmik as well, but I do think just because she took the director's note so well that her performance came through. Okay, so it is time for the judges' critiques. And first off, starting with Simone. Um, Simone, so like in the studio, they were a little worried about Simone, but they said that her performance translated to the film quite nicely. Um, and I agree, it did transform quite nicely. I think when you're looking in the studio, I think it's easy, you know, to like love the big theatricality of it all. But I do believe that sometimes with television and film, you need a lot less. And I think that the subtlety and the nuance, as Cynthia and Vira said, um, it translated well and it, and it personalized her character. Simone's character seems like an actual human being as opposed to an archetype or caricature. And then also she nailed the pocket challenge. You know what I mean? She looks stunning. It's, very, it's done very well. It's always high tier, fashionable. Um, and she just has a really like ease and natural talent to everything that is Simone, the ebony enchantress. Up next is Olivia Lux. Um, they loved her look. It was very, I mean, like they thought it was like, it was glamorous, it was pristine, it was perfect. It was very, very detailed all the way down to like the studded diamonds on her shoes. However, um, it wasn't out pocket. It had pockets but it was not a look that was about pockets. And then also they talked about her like being like one no and this was a character that they saw to her before. They know she does it well but there, there also weren't any like peaks and valleys. There was no variation so they didn't really care about the character. <laughs> Rosé rose to the occasion is what they said and she did. They said that she was a delight. She was very professional. Um, like her performance, it came down to her being a professional, being prepared, and also just being a delight in the studio. And then also her look, some of them said that was probably her favorite look that they saw from all of Rosé's look. And I agree, it's, 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 I loved it. I loved it. I think I liked her devil look a little more, but this one was really good. I really thought it was like fabulous. Um, the proportions were right. You could see her neck. There was shape. The hair was nice. There's a lot about it. There was a lot about it that could be desired. I mean, that was desirable. Um, but yeah, they felt like that like Rose was bottled up, but she's really, and then they also said that every week she's getting better, which is the goal of the competition. You're supposed to, that is what you're supposed to do in this competition. Get consistently better every single week. Now, Candy Muse, Candy Muse, like, Candy Muse could have been bigger. Candy Muse's performance could have been bigger. And then also they were like pushing her, but they were still getting Candy Muse. And they said that they had fun with her in the studio because Candy Muse is a delight. You know, she could read a telephone book and they would eat the shit up. But there wasn't much of a, of a character change. Michelle Visage said that if Candy Muse had done the ginger ale and if Olivia Lux had Dan Dominique, the evil villain, that probably would have been better for both of them because we, it would have like showed us something that we haven't seen before. You know what I mean? But but alas, and then also her look, it just, it, it wasn't good. It didn't make sense. They were looking at it. They didn't know what happened. Um, 
it didn't make sense. They, they said it was like Kinko's, Chartreuse Ribbon, Origami, I don't know. I don't know, but it wasn't good. And it wasn't even good in the abstract kind of way. It wasn't even good in the abstract. It just, it just, it just wasn't a hit. Um, and Got Mick. Got Mick, now they said that like, like Olivia Lux and Candy Muse, Got Mick kind of played like a whiny, like moany character. But the difference between Got Mick and Olivia Lux and Candy Muse is that she had like peaks and valleys so that you were really actually interested and it felt like a real person and a character with the journey that you could watch. Um, and they said that the, her like comedic ideas were really nice when it came to the sneezing and the cat fight, which were great. They said she kind of has the tendency to get in her head in the beginning, but once she just like, once she stops being on, it's just really there to enjoy herself and have fun. Got big really shines through and they also loved her look. They said it was like funny, it had a point of view, it was a cultural reference, it was inventive, creative. They said at, at this point, you know, season 13, they've seen just about everything that they're gonna see on the RuPaul's Drag Race main stage, but this is something that they haven't seen before. And it was timeless and everybody wanted it. Cynthia Enviro said that she would run up and snatch it off of her body. Now, before that, RuPaul asked the girls, okay, so who do you, who do you think should go home? Now this gagged me because everybody said Olivia Lux. Now, I was prepared for everybody to say Candy Muse for two reasons. One, because her look was trash. You know what I mean? I just think like the top five, bringing that to the stage of the top five is unacceptable. And then secondly, she's won the least number of challenges. Out of everybody up there, I think Olivia Lux has two, Candy Muse has one, I think Got Mick has two or three, I think Rose has two or three, and then Simone has four. Um, yeah, that's what I was prepared for everybody to say, but everybody actually said Olivia Lux because they said that Olivia Lux, she still has a lot of like, she has a lot of learning to do. She has more learning to do. I think Got Mick said that she's been trying to like grow and learn at a faster pace, but everybody's just growing more quickly. Rose even mentioned that like, no, Candy Muse said that um, she has a lot more to learn about herself and drag before it's time to be the Drag Race Superstar of season 13. And Rose similarly said that she has more to just learn about herself before she steps into that role. Um, now, Olivia Lux, RuPaul asked her, okay, who do you think should go home? And at first she says, she stalls, she's blinking. And she's like, I cannot say any of the other girls and I cannot say myself. This whole energy is giving that like, she doesn't want to say somebody else to be mean and she doesn't want to say herself, even though she might feel like it should be herself. But alas, after a while, she says, based on everything, based on everything, which I guess means the entire competition, um, she says Candy Muse, which is, you know, what I was thinking everybody else was gonna say, but nope. But I think that just like, because the girls have a perspective that we're not able to see, you know, the personality, the personhood, and you know, like the spiritual and like intrapersonal growth that happens. People at home, like we can see pieces of it, but we don't get to see the full experience or energy like the four other girls have been able to see and witness. Okay, so the girls come back out um, to hear the judges like final critiques to find out who's in the top and the bottom. Um, and Rosé wins, which I believe she like deserved to win. She did a very good job. She did an awesome job. She looked stunning. Her performance and professional was stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Well done, Rosé, well done. Um, and that makes Got Mick and Simone safe, putting Olivia Lux and Candy Muse in the bottom. So they end up lip syncing to Strong Enough by Cher. I'm not super familiar with the song, but in all, I honestly feel like it was like a hand in hand lip sync. I can't say that either one of them were like blew, excuse me. I can't say that one of them blew the other out of the water. I just can't say that. I don't believe it. It doesn't seem like the truth to me. Um, but I do feel like just because they've been asking to see more from Olivia Lux and haven't seen more. Whereas it feels like Candy Muse has more range which is why I feel like Candy Muse ended up winning. So Candy Muse ends up winning the lip sync. Olivia Lux goes home. It's very tearful. She cries. 
hugs the girls, gives a heartfelt goodbye, and heads out the door. Now, a little bit of tidbit about um, Untucked. Untucked, there's a lot going on. So the girls go to the back and they're talking about, and Livy is like, like, I know you girls don't take it personally. I know I don't, I know you girls don't mean it personally that we just had to vote for somebody. But she said, I've accomplished so much and I really want to make it to top four and I've come here to explore. And the other girls were like, well, none of us came here to explore. The other four girls came here to win. Um, and yeah, and that was just like a defining difference for me between Olivia Lux and the other girls. But also fucking like Candy Muse has a panic attack or something, girl. She's like, I'm having a fucking panic attack. I'm having a fucking panic attack. I don't know. She gets lightheaded, dizzy, high blood pressure. I don't know what it is, girl, but she isn't able to go back on the stage because I think I think everybody knows that she's going to have to fucking lip sync. So like the medics are out there and she's not really able to calm down for a while. I don't know how long it takes, but eventually she goes back onto the stage. They finish up the lip sync and that's the tea. But yeah, girl, that was like nerve wracking. I was like, is this ethical to still have her like if somebody so recently just had hella high blood pressure and you're gonna have them go on stage and perform, I just I just don't know if that's ethical. I know it got down and they had the medics there and the medics gave it the thumbs up, but I would just say, you know that like dancing and lip syncing is gonna raise the motherfucking blood pressure, right? So I don't know if it would be like ethical for them to go back on stage, but she ends up going back on. Candy Muse says she wants to do it, they do it. And whoop de whoop bop de wop Olivia Lux also gets a visit from her family, her grandmother and her sister, or her grandmother and her aunt, her grandmother and her si cousin, I don't know. It's her grandmother and somebody. And it's very heartfelt because like Olivia Lux says that like before she left, her grandmother said that she wouldn't be able to support her or anything that she does drag. Um, so the fact that she was able to get a message from them during this episode of Untucked, it was very, it was very tearful. She cried a bunch. But yeah, that's the episode, girl. Yes, yes, yes. I figured her her lack of self-awareness was going to end up sending her home. Did I not say that last week? Did I not say that? But yeah, girl, so we have our top four. Candy Muse, Got Mick, Rosé, and Simone. And like, we're there, girl. We're there. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be Candy Muse. No shade. I just don't think it's going to be Candy Muse. And it's really, I really do feel like it's between like Gottmik, Rose, and Simone. I do feel like Gottmik is a natural talent, you know what I mean? Just like supernatural talent. Rose has pers like continuously gotten better. I think out of everybody up there, Rose might be the most ready in terms of just like experience and professionalism of carrying the crown. But Simone has really just like come and like killed the motherfucking competition. Nobody has more wins than Simone. And that's just point blank period. But it's like really up to see how the studio performance goes and their final looks, their final looks. I guess that's what it's up to. But yeah, either way, girl, I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, this is almost over. This is almost over. Um, but yeah, thank y'all for watching. Um, please like go follow me on Instagram if you want to tune into more like personal life updates or even go find me on TikTok if um if you like I, I'm I'm a funny bitch on TikTok. I'm not even gonna lie. Go turn go tune into my TikTok if you just wanna see me on a regular basis. I post pretty regularly there and it's funny skits and stuff. But yeah, thanks again for watching. Um, let me know how you felt about this show, about this episode in the comments. Like if you liked this video and subscribe for more content. And until next time, this is XMO. Bye. Oh, also, you can, al you can always just pick another video. You know you have another 10 to 15, 20 minutes. It's a really low commitment, girl. And it's right here. Like I made, I even made it easy for you, Miss Girl.